place to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. of the Holy Eucharist in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins and be truly sorry for all of them. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your spirit, O Lord, we pray, imbue us powerfully with spiritual gifts that he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen to the readings of the Word of God. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, or angels, or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response be, Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord are you. O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Response, keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me, even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me, 
With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Response. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body too abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Response. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Response. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Alleluia, Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for this, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me and I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be one as we are one I in them and you in me that they may be brought to perfection as one that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you love me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you. And they know that you sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today's Gospel is called the Priestly, which Jesus did after the Last Supper, at the time when His public ministry has ended and nothing remains to be done but to consummate his self-offering at the cross. Jesus prays concerning the disciples. He committed them to the Father in prayer with a heart and mind unto the absolute fulfillment of God the Father's will, no matter what the cost. Jesus prayed with a full and deep sense of the familiar relationship and the natural order that exists between God the Father and God the Son, that before anything was created, there was a love relationship between the persons of the Godhead, the Trinity. Even if Jesus had not specifically told us this, 
we might have understood it by other biblical truths. Understanding that God is eternal from the book of Micah, chapter 5, verse 2, and that God is love. First letter of John, chapter 4, verse 8, and verse 16. There was never a time when God did not love and was not loved. Genuine love must have an object outside of itself to love. Therefore, love existed between the persons of the Godhead before anything was created. Jesus sets us an example in all the times of tribulation to fall back upon our sonship, our adoption into the fatherhood of our merciful God. Three important dimensions of this priestly prayer. Number one, Jesus' inclination to foster unity among people, such as the unity that exists between Jesus and His Father. The same unity among God's people helps the world to believe that the Father sent the Son. Jesus prayed that their unity would follow the pattern of the unity of the Godhead, specifically in the relationship between God the Father and God the Son. If the Father is in Him, and He is in them, then the Father is in them. They are drawn into the very life of God, and the life of God is perfect love. John 17 is a unique opportunity to see the nature and the heart of Jesus. This unity entails that our communities should give witness to compassion and merciful love, just as the Father and Jesus Himself has manifested to us. He envisioned the great multitude before the throne of God of every nation race, language, class, and social level. Jesus prayed that they might rise above their different backgrounds and understand their unity, that they may all be as one. The oneness Jesus had in mind was the unity that comes from the shared life in both God the Father and God the Son. It is not uniformity among believers, but for unity rooted in love and a shared nature bringing together the many different parts of Jesus' one body. Jesus had in mind the true unity of the Spirit, as Saint Paul wrote to the Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3. Jesus received love from God the Father And this love relationship was the strength 
and sustenance of his life. His great prayer was that the same love that was his strength and sustenance would fill his disciples both near and far. This speaks of the essential place of love in the Christian life and community. Jesus prayed that his disciples would not only be filled with the love of God the Father, but that they would also know the indwelling presence of Jesus himself. It is his mission to enable us to know the Father the way he knows us, so that we may be one the way Jesus and the Father are one. Jesus did not simply teach about the name or character of God. He manifested, he displayed that character. Jesus lived out the love and goodness and righteousness and the grace and holiness of God the Father. He manifested God's name to them. Believers today have a similar call and duty. Paul wrote that believers are like living letters read by the world in his second in his second letter to the Corinthians chapter 3 verses 2 to 3 with the responsibility to manifest the name and the nature of God to a watching world. When Jesus said, I do not pray for the world, it was not because he did not care for a lost and fallen world. It was to focus on his own disciples. He was praying for the instrument he was creating through which he would reach the world. For the salvation of the world depends on the witness of those whom the Father has given him out of the world and it is they who need his intercession. They needed prayer because of the circumstances surrounding the departure of Jesus, his betrayal, arrest, trial, beatings, crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. His prayer for the disciples involves hope for the world. Thus, Jesus has prayed for us, Father, keep them. We need keeping from the vision, keeping them that they may be one. We need keeping from error, sin, hypocrisy, and falsehood. It will mean unity of spirit, unity of heart, unity of purpose, and unity of destiny. A life filled with joy, rooted in unbroken fellowship with God, our Father. Joy as the fruit of the true faith and confidence in our Father. Seeing 
that the great things God has done never diminished by our own sin, selfishness, and deception. Second, John 17 provides valuable insight into the purposes of Jesus' suffering. Jesus is the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. From the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 8. And himself, the high priest from the order of Melchizedek, who offered the sacrifice. And for their sake, I sanctify myself as both priest, altar and sacrifice, and this Christ did from the womb to the tomb at his death spatially. Chrysostom paraphrases, I sanctify myself as I offer myself in sacrifice. He was set aside for God the Father and His purpose to complete the work of the cross. It was true that finished work that the Word of God and the work of God would become fully effective in the lives of the disciples that they may also be sanctified by the truth. Sanctify means to be set apart for God's special pleasure and use. It implies holiness being set apart from the corruption of the world and for God's use. He does not merely lead them into the world, but sends them into it to witness to this same truth of God. Jesus came to teach and live among us. He came to suffer for truth and righteousness to rescue men. This glorification embraces His death, resurrection, and ascension at God's right hand as accredited mediator. Our hope, our salvation, our perfection are to be achieved to the priesthood of Jesus, the divine mercy, the merciful and faithful great high priest of the new covenant. is God's greatest gift to His creation. Father Serapim Mikalenko wrote, God, however, though He lavishes His gifts most freely upon us, cannot force us to accept them. That is why this one great unfailing means to perfection, Jesus Christ, the great High Priest, can be appropriated by us only through a faith of total trust. The power to progress toward maturity in the Christian life comes only to the knowledge of Jesus in His heavenly priesthood. 
that is we must come to know him by experiencing his character his person and his mission we must allow him to work in us to bring about the inheritance is waiting to share with us the kingdom of heaven we can do this only if we trust completely in his goodness and mercy saint paustina kowalska made this telling entry in her spiritual diary now i know that even some souls that are chosen and well advanced in the religious life or the spiritual life do not have the courage to entrust themselves completely to God. And this is so because few souls know the unfathomable mercy of God and his great goodness from her diary number 731 our lord often told her of the need for us to trust in his mercy o oh, if sinners knew my mercy they would not perish in such great numbers diary number 1396 the graces of my mercy are drawn by means of one vessel only that is trust diary number 1578 I desire that these souls distinguish themselves by boundless trust in my mercy. I myself will attend to the sanctification of such souls. I will provide them with everything they will need to attain sanctity. Diary number 1578 to the many revelations he granted to saint postina our lord is attempting to focus the church attention upon these truths of his holy priesthood in order to prepare the world for his return as saint postina records in her diary our lord command commanded her write down these words my daughter speak to the world about my mercy let all mankind recognize my unfathomable mercy it is a sign for the end times after it will come the day of justice while there is still time let them have recourse to the fount of my mercy let them profit from the blood and water which gush forth for them diary number 848 the blood and water that gush forth from Christ pierced side is above all the symbol of his life poured out for his brothers i will give him a portion among the great because he poured out his life unto death isaiah chapter 53 verse 12 after the suffering of his soul 
he will see the light of life and be satisfied by knowledge of him my righteous servant will justify many Isaiah chapter 53 verse 11 justify means that sin is removed and union with the holy god is reestablished this could be done only by a priest offering the blood of atonement what jesus implied to saint postina is that by his poured out life he is the priest as well as the atoning sacrifice that expiated our sinfulness and opened to us the channel of grace and divine life this is the great mercy imparted to sinful humanity since the offerer and the offering are one and the same divine person jesus who was constituted priest by his father to the incarnation and the passion he can rightfully be titled the great high priest the great mercy the image of jesus the divine mercy that saint faustina was told by him to paint was wearing a white tunic and emitting the red and pale rays that represent the blood and water of his life poured out and he was entering a dwelling of light to which there were three doors this is a great allusion to the high priest of the old covenant who on the day of atonement sprinkled blood for remission of sins In Christ's case, however, the blood is his own. The Old Testament priest went in beyond the veil at the jeopardy of his life. If he came out alive, the people knew this was their assurance of sins forgiven. Jesus came out alive resurrected from the dead and announced peace and the forgiveness of sin but then only those who believe in him saw him when he returns again with the clouds every eye will see him even those who pierced him from the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 7 then he will come not to deal with sin which was done once and for all by his self offering but to bestow salvation on those who eagerly awaiting his coming in faith trust and vigilance from the letter of St Paul to the Hebrews chapter 9 verse 28 the image of the divine mercy given to St Faustina is therefore a representation of the three stages of the priesthood of Christ his earthly ministry is represented by the wounds to his human person that attest to his sacrifice 
his ankle length priestly tunic and the rays here denoting his blood sprinkled in heaven represent his heavenly priesthood as he continues to intercede for us his hand appraised in absolution blessing and welcome represents his priesthood when he comes again this time the rays are seen as arrows pointing to the heart of the lord a powerful symbol of how christ continues to sanctify us through his presence in the sacraments they lead us into the heart of the temple in which god the lights to dwell the inscription on the image jesus i trust in you indicates that it is the knowledge of christ in his heavenly priesthood that is capable of eliciting in us the trust through which jesus the divine mercy will bring us to the fullness of salvation. Jesus tells Saint Faustina, tell all people, my daughter, that I am love and mercy itself. When a soul approaches me with trust, I feel it with such an abundance of graces that it cannot contain them within itself but radiates them to other souls diary number 1074 he continues telling her write this everything that exists is enclosed in the bowels of my mercy more deeply than an infant in its mother's womb how painfully this trust of my goodness wounds me diary number 1076 and so to achieve the fullness of life that we are promised the holiness we are commanded to attain. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 6. And number three, Christ's motive in doing the will of the Father should be ours. When you ask a blessing from God, ask it that you may glorify God by it. Do you pine to have your health back again? Be sure that you want to spend it all for him do you desire temporal advancement desire it that you may promote his glory do you even long for growth in grace ask it only that you may glorify him the glory of his presence the glory of his word, the glory of his spirit, the glory of his power, the glory of his leadership, the glory of his preservation. In all these aspects, there is the essential aspect 
of the presence of Jesus, God the Son. Scripturally speaking, when God gives or displays His glory to His people, it is some type of manifestation of God's presence. God's glory is, in some way, the regions or shining of His presence, His essential nature. The glory which you gave me. It is important to remember that the glory that God the Father gave to God the Son was glory that often appeared humble, weak, and suffering. It was glory that was untimely displayed in radical sacrifice. Just as His true glory was to follow the path of the lowly service culminating in the cross, so for them the true glory lay in the path of lowly service as a living witness of merciful love wherever it might lead them. As would Saints Marcellinus and Peter whom we commemorate today, the martyrs who gave witness to our faith Saint Marcellinus, a priest, and Saint Peter, an exorcist. Both served the church in Rome around the year 300. After they were imprisoned, they led many fellow prisoners unto Christianity and were later beheaded. Let us imitate these martyrs who united their pains and sacrifices with that of Christ on the cross and together with Saint Paul fill up in his own flesh what is lacking in the suffering of Christ on behalf of his body, the Church. As we share in the common priesthood of Christ by virtue of our baptism, let us offer our sufferings in union with him at the cross. As head of his body for such generates upon us his victory and power. Thus, whenever you experience pain, difficulty, sickness, or any form of adversity, do remember, offer it up, and not to forget to sigh from your heart, Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Let us now recite the general intercessions. Sincerity and practical love of neighbors shall be the hallmark of all our communities and of each of us. We know how challenging this can be. Therefore, with humble trust, let us ask the Lord's help as we pray, Lord, graciously hear us. That the Church may constantly uphold the primacy of love among all values, we pray, Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. That our Holy Father and all Church leaders may continually inspire us with a life patterned after that of Christ. We pray, 
Lord, graciously hear us, that our Christian communities may rise above the predominant attitudes of indifference, selfishness, and vengefulness. We pray, Lord, graciously hear us, that we may be able to forgive those who offended us and never harbor grudge and feelings of revenge. We pray, Lord, graciously hear us, that we may not fail to show loving concern for our neighbor, especially the sick, the poor, and the marginalized. We pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. We pray, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, grant us the grace to show our love through acts of compassion, generosity, and forgiveness in imitation of you who continue to love and care forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us now sing our offertory song. Pray, brothers and sisters, that these our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, Make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after His resurrection, He plainly appeared to all His disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that He might make us sharers in His divinity. Therefore, Overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people, exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these offerings like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. The similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in my memory. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, Cardinal Advincula, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. A 
at the Savior's command, and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. This is Jesus the Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away our sins. Happy are you who are now invited to receive him in this sacred banquet. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, 
and my soul shall, shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you now sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I adore thee in the sacrament of thy love, the ineffable Eucharist. Never permit me to be separated from thee. And let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us to our participation in them that we may merit the gifts of the Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God. I knelt before Him one stormy night his face was adorned in a golden light I felt so unworthy I wanted to run and hide But his gaze was so intense I felt paralyzed Divine mercy like a river my soul wash me clean